Welcome to Sunday School. I'm so glad that you've joined us for this series called God Speaks. Last week, we were talking about Does God Speak to Me? And in that, in that lesson, we were drawn to the story of the prodigal son. Maybe we could call it the story of the waiting father. The prodigal son comes to his senses. He says to himself, why am I here starving when I could return to my father? I'll, I'll ask if I could be one of his hired hands. I'll have plenty to eat. And so he turns around, but we're reminded by the scripture that the father saw him a long way off and he ran to his son and embraced him. And when the son says, I'm no longer worthy to be called your son, but let me be a hired hand, the father has no part of it. He receives him. He restores him to being a son who's got all of the rights and privileges of being in relationship with the father. And he, he has a celebration that his son has come home. So last week, we studied the fact that God wants to speak to his children. And this week, we're going to look at some of the things that get in the way of us hearing his voice. Remember that analogy that we used last week out of the book of the radio and tuning the dial? This is before digital radio stations. You had to turn the dial. You went through static after static after some more static and then finally you're tuned into the station that you want to hear. So why don't we hear what God is saying? This week, we're going to dive into that. We're going to look at what are some of the things that get in the way of us hearing from God. And we're going to look at Adam and Eve. God would come to them in the cool of the evening to talk with them to have a relationship with them. And Genesis 3 is where we'll be at. And when God comes in the evening, into the garden, that evening in Genesis 3, Adam and Eve hid themselves. We're going to talk about some of the times when we distance ourselves from God. That's what Adam and Eve did. They distanced themselves from God by believing the lie of the serpent and disobeying God. I dis distance myself from God at times, maybe by disobedience, but more often by distraction or stubborn independence. I want to do things my way. And in this study today, we're going to lean into thinking about who moved, who's distanced themselves. Is it God or is it me? So we all have at times doubted God's presence or doubted some of his promises. That's what the serpent does in Genesis 3. He plants doubts in Adam and Eve's mind. Let's look at it in Genesis 3, 1 through 9. The serpent was the shrewdest of all the wild animals the Lord had made. One day he asked the woman, did God really say to you that you must not eat from the tree, the fruit, from any of the trees in the garden? The woman replies, of course, we may eat 
the fruit from the tree is in the garden. It's only the fruit from the tree in the middle of the garden that we're not allowed to eat. God said, you must not eat it or even touch it or you will die. You won't die, the serpent replied to the woman. God knows that your eyes will be opened as soon as you eat it and that you will be like God, knowing good and evil. The woman was convinced. She saw the tree, that it was beautiful and its fruit looked delicious, and she wanted the wisdom that it would give her. So she took some of the fruit and she ate it. Then she gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it too. And at that moment, their eyes were opened, and suddenly they felt shame at their nakedness. So they sewed fig leaves together to cover themselves. When the cool of the evening breezes were blowing, the man and his wife heard God walking in the garden. So they hid from the Lord among the trees. Then the Lord called to the man, Where are you? God was calling out to them, where are you? Let's meet together. In Genesis 3, you can see the different conversations that are going on between Eve. You can hear the, the lies that the serpent is telling, the enemy is telling her. God's holding something back from you. You can't trust him to give, him, give you every good thing. There's something he's holding back. You can hear her own thoughts almost as she is convinced that, hey, that tree is beautiful and its fruit looks good and I deserve to have it. And then you hear a conversation, she hides from God. And in her disobedience, separates herself from God. She was the one who moved. And she's disconnected from the Lord. We can't serve him well if we're disconnected. We can't hear his thoughts when we're disconnected and our relationship feels distant. We move in a lot of different ways from God. This one was disobedience. We'll get back to that in a little bit. But let's think about distractions, how distractions move us from God's presence. There is such an assault on our attention, messages, through Facebook, through um, in the internet, on billboards, at bus stops, advertisements. One person estimated that we see between three and 5,000 adver advertisements during a day. TV, internet, out in our environment, wherever we are, we're surrounded by it. And they're trying to draw our attention towards so many things. And then we're busier than we probably ought to be. I know I'm guilty of that. We fill our lives so full that we lose our quiet space if we're not careful. Quiet time, that's something that I was challenged to build as a 15-year-old who had just gotten up from an altar to rededicate my life to Jesus. My pastor encouraged me to set aside 15 to 30 minutes in the morning to read my Bible, to pray, and also to listen to God. And in today's life, <laughs> it's difficult to find those quiet places. We have to be intentional, intentional about setting them up. 
Have you been able to do that? Do you have a time where it's just you turning your attention to the things that God might be speaking to your heart? He wants to meet with you and build that relationship. If we're struggling to hear God's voice, then maybe we need to create space where we can hear from him. We start small, we just start <laughs> and welcome him to speak to us through his word, through quiet times in prayer, practice listening and that connection starts to be built again. So what's some of the static in our life? We talked a little bit about disobedience, distraction, and a third thing, our stubborn independence. Uh, we want to do things our way. And sometimes we forget to kind of bow before the Lord and get his input on the things that we're thinking about. Um, we need to admit that we're interdependent with God and bring our plans to him, lay them at his feet. Um, there have been times when in my stubborn independence. I've had a plan and tried to work it out and exhausted myself doing it. The results, not so great. But when we submit our plans to God and he blesses them, he can do more in a day than we could accomplish in a month or a year, <laughs> maybe a lifetime, because he moves in supernatural ways. So can we do that? Can we um, lay down our stubborn independence and submit our plans to God? I want us to look a little further into that idea of disobedience we read about it in Genesis 3. The enemy was lying to Eve to try and rob her of good things that God had for her by having her cross that line on the one tree that God told them not to eat from. Somebody has called that tree the choice tree. God set up a choice in that garden whether Adam and Eve would listen to him or whether they would choose to disobey. I have opportunities to make choices and to, dis to decide whether I'll listen to God or disobey. Our disobedience moves us farther from God. Sometimes we do things that are wrong and we know they're wrong. And then sometimes it's our disobedience in not doing the things that are right, that we felt God nudge us to doing and we just disregard them or push them off to the side. I have to tell you, I've disobeyed in both ways. I've made wrong choices and I've ignored doing the right thing that I feel like God is directing me to do. Both of those lead me further from hearing God's voice. I can't get very far in disobedience. I want us to look at John 16 together and if you could turn there with me we're going to be looking at verses 5 through 15. This is the time when Jesus is preparing to leave his disciples. And he's talking to them 
about the fact that he's going to be leaving. The cross is the next day. And he wants to let them know that he is sending them the Holy Spirit. So can we look at verses 5 through 15? But now I am going away to the one who sent me, and not one of you is asking where I am going. Instead, you grieve because I've told you that I must go. But in fact, it's best for you that I go away, because if I don't, the advocate won't come. If I do not go away, then I, if I do go away, I'm sorry, then I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world of sin and of God's righteousness and of the coming judgment. The world, um, I'm sorry, I'm having trouble seeing this word. The world's sin is that it refuses to believe in me. Righteousness is available because I go to the Father, and you will see me no more. Judgment will come because the ruler of the world has already been judged. But there is much more that I want to tell you, but you can't bear it now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own, but he will tell you what he has heard. He will tell you about the future. He will bring glory to me by telling you whatever he receives from me. All that is mine belongs to the Father. This is why I have said that the Spirit will tell you whatever he receives from me. Why do we remove the static from our lives? Why do we fight? stubbornness and disobedience and distraction because the Holy Spirit wants to speak with us. He wants to share us, share with us what's on the heart of God the Father, Jesus the Son. And so we want to remove that static, that distance in our relationship so that we can hear from him, so that our relationship is that give and take, that growing and learning through the Holy Spirit. When we turn down the static and we tune into God, we hear the Holy Spirit's voice, and he is able to show us things that we can't learn on our own. Will you do what I'm doing, I'm challenged to do? Create that quiet space. Um, my quiet time, I like to be in the morning. And I remember trying to sneak down the stairs without squeaking them to wake up the boys as I was getting to that quiet place with the Lord. Wherever it fits best in your day, be intentional about building that quiet space. Let's work hard against our own stubborn independence, the distractions of our life, and our disobedience and let's get ourselves tuned in to hearing the things that the Holy Spirit wants to say to us. God speaks and he has things to say to us that will encourage us, that will bring joy and peace because they are the things of truth that are coming from his Holy Spirit. His word comes alive in the scripture. His word comes alive in our time of waiting on him. 
when we push away those distractions and give him time to speak. I'm looking forward to the things that you are hearing from the Lord. I'm looking forward to creating even more space in my life to hear from him. God speaks. You and I are making a decision to listen. Thanks for joining me today for Sunday School. Looking forward to talking to you again next week about God Speaks. Bye now. Thank you.